Central District Office. Um, so I handle a lot of different things. I'm going to talk about some she things. I am not the office. I'm just one of the many great people there. Um, and then we have Gail and Leah, who are go our um, instructional technologists, and they're going to share some more information about Canvas. Kim Lewis, who's an assistant principal here, is going to talk about Naviance, and we'll wrap up with Skyward. So we're going to be ta kind of tag teaming it today. So these are things we're going to kind of touch on today, and obviously it's just two of you in here. So if you have questions, please interrupt. You know, don't feel like you you know need to listen to us if you have more pertinent questions. We're going to touch on the website, the mobile app, Canvas, Naviance, and Skyward. So are there systems in specific that you definitely have more questions on that we should make sure that we are addressing? Okay, Naviance is really eighth grade and up. So if you have younger students, then you wouldn't be using that. But if you have you know, older students, then you will get into that one. So the district website. This really is a great tool that all of our parents should be using. We have a wealth of information on there. Um, it, we really want to make it a one-stop shop. So anything you need as a parent in the district, you can go there and you can find the answers. You can find links to the things you need to get to. You can find resources. Um, we really want it to be a very useful tool. So if you ever have things that you're looking for you think should be on the website, feel free to mention it to your office, your administrator, and that might be something that we need to consider adding. We really want it to be useful for all of our families. Uh, these are just some of the things you can find on the website. We do have our district calendars, both a live Google calendar as well as the printable calendars. They have all of our you know, um, days off and such over the course of the year. You can find lunch menus, newsletters for each of our schools, staff directory, news posts, school supply lists, and of course the links to all the other resources that we'll be talking about tonight. One thing that we will be adding soon, um, part of it as a result of this night, is parent resources. So we really are going to try to compile resources that our parents are looking for, whether it's outside resources to um, you know, mental health things, those kinds of things that we can put together in one spot so our parents can go there and really find what they're looking for instead of having to search on their own through Google or whatever, really trying to give you some of those resources. Another thing that we are going to be um, promoting now is we have a new partnership with several other districts, U46, 300, and 303, to have some CTE programming, um, some wider options for our high schoolers. So through this partnership, we will have students from those other districts coming here for vet science, and our students can go to their programs for precision manufacturing and welding, and that will continue to expand. So we do have a new website for that. I just wanted to show you real quick. Career Technical Education. So there is a website for this. So this is another tool that our parents can use if their students are interested in CTE programs and want to find out more. We have information not just about the regional pathways that are shared among all the districts, but also our own pathways as well. Um, so we can go to the district, go into 301, and here you can see the different programs that we have um, pathways that our students can participate in if they want to uh, maybe go into a future career in something you know technical related. All right. And then we have the mobile app. Do you guys have the mobile app? Are you familiar with the mobile app at all? Nope. All right. So the mobile app is Frankly, I love it. I use it all the time as an employee in the district, but as a parent, it also is a great resource. It has a lot of the same information that we have on the district website, and you can access it through your phone. Um, you can have access to the news posts that are putting out there, the calendar, um, lunch menus. A lot of these links take you directly to the website, so you are getting up-to-date information. We're not having to you know, update it in multiple places, so you can get it very quickly and easily. Uh, the best thing about the app, though, um, is you can make it specific to the schools where your children attend. So you can go into the settings and you can say, you know, I want to see information for the high school and Lily Lake. That's where my kids are. And then when you go to the calendar, you'll only see the events that are all district or Lily Lake or CHS. You don't have to filter through all the other buildings. So it really is a great tool for you. It also um, will filter out your news items so you just see the posts and things that are relevant to you as well. So that's a great thing. Another great feature about the mobile app is that we have the capability if there is a, a emergency or urgent type of situation that we need to get news out to our families very quickly, we can push a notification through the app. 
So instead of having to wait for an email or have the phone ring but you don't answer it because you don't know the number, you can get that notification through the mobile app right away. So if there was you know, a tornado, something like that, where we had to go into some sort of emergency mode, you would be the first people probably to realize that. You have to sign in through a password? Or nope, it's free download available both on Apple and uh, Android. Android, thank you. My mind went blank for a second. Uh, devices, so you can just go to the, your store, whatever your app store is for your device and search for Central School District 301. It's a free download um, and it really just makes a lot of things very easy. You also then through here can have links to Skyward and Canvas and those things as well. So if you're trying to do these things on the go, you can get to it that way and not have to be at your computer. Okay, any questions on the app that I can answer for you? All right, Canvas. Leah and Gail are on. I kind of fell asleep, I got picked up. There you go. Mm -hmm. there we go. I'm uh, Gail Stover. I'm one of the instructional coaches. I had been an elementary teacher for some 15, 17 years. Um, and this is my partner in crime here, Leah Harold. Oh, uh, Leah Harold, one of the instructional coaches um, at elementary with Gail. And I taught fourth grade um, at Country Trails for nine years prior to this position. So we um, just want to give you just a little overview today on what Canvas is. Um, Canvas is what we call a learning management system. It's where um, digital tools and resources for teachers and students kind of come together. Uh, Canvas courses are established uh, by subject or by a class and the reason that may be different, it looks very different from a kindergarten class that uses Canvas to a high school student that uses Canvas. So the teachers and the report cards can be set up a little differently. So. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, we have every one of our kindergarten classes um, is using Canvas at some level. Um, within these courses, there could be informational pages. You could do a discussion that's within your class. Um, there may be assignments that are given out to students as well as quizzes or tests. And if it's quizzes or tests that um, are going to be graded and show up in a grade book, the teacher has the ability to lock that down so all the information is um, valid. If a student is absent for the day, uh, they do not have access to the test that day. They only have it when they're live in class. So uh, as far as kindergarten, access to Canvas obviously looks a lot different than a junior in high school. But we start um, students out at a very young age. It's a great way to get them the information um, for websites that we want them to have and only have. So it's a, it's a nice way to control that information. So here's an example of what Canvas may look like. It'll look different for each user, but when you um, a student logs into Canvas, this is what's called their dashboard, and they have a square for each course. At the elementary level, it would be a square for each subject, one for reading, um, <coughs> language arts, science, social studies, math, and then middle school, high school, it would be for their different classes throughout the day. So everybody's will look a little different, but that's the starting point. And with this, your assignments really can, um, th they can be graded within Canvas. And those assignments um, for middle school and high school can be pushed directly to Skyward and populate there. And then for elementary, it doesn't directly push to Skyward, but teachers can take the grades from Canvas and manually enter them into Skyward. But just keep in mind that Skyward is still the official grade book for your child. Um, that's where the report cards come from and all of that. Um, Okay, so this is just another look, a um, little bit more in depth. So those first squares that we saw, if you would click into one of those, then this is what you might see if you were, now this is a student view. If I was a student, oops, excuse me, I went the wrong way. Um, so right in here, um, basically um, we are elementary, so we like a lot of color and bells and whistles on our pages. So we put logos and things for our littles to be able to access different things. Uh, but basically everybody is the same. There would be a home page. Uh, there would be a button they could click for assignments. Like I said before, discussions. You could put out a one or two sentence questionnaire um, and students within the classroom uh, could have that discussion. So if you had a, a student that maybe did not want to take a risk and talk in front of his peers, um, him or her, this is a nice way 
uh, that they could be a part of that discussion that's a little safer. So they're actually um, able to hear their voice and feel a little bit more comfortable with that. Again, pages, this is what we call a page. It's where we can put more information as far as icons and things like that. And again, quizzes. And the best thing is it now connects right into their Google Drive. So if they have papers, they've written a 14-page English paper that now they need to turn into their teacher, and it's through Canvas. All they have to do is click the Google Drive button. It goes right into their drive and attaches it right into the assignment, and it's turned into the teacher. There is a calendar feature as well. If an assignment has a due date, if there's a test coming up, that would show for the student as well. But again, we just want to uh, make sure everybody um, realizes that Skyward is where the main grades go. Not every assignment is going to come through Canvas. Um, sometimes it's just not appropriate. And so this is a tool that's used in the classroom, but it might not be used 100%. And that's OK, because um, it has to be used appropriately. Um, so again, why do we use Canvas? Um, it's where we can house um, that information, um, but it's where teachers can work together. So I can work across the district with my fifth grade teachers to design courses, to uh, make sure my curriculum from one elementary building is the same um, against um, another elementary building um, within the district. So. And the best thing about Canvas, it's available on any device. Um, currently, obviously, everybody in our district has a, has a Chromebook, K through 12, but I can open it up on my Mac at home. Um, our littles, our kindergarten, first grade, do not take home their Chromebooks, but they can still access their Canvas course by using mom and dad's laptop at home by just signing in. Um, Again, for our littles, uh, when I say littles, we're talking K-5. It's a great place that we keep them in one location. We have a single sign-on in our district. So when they sign into their account, uh, their Canvas, excuse me, their uh, Chromebook, they automatically are signed into their Google account as well as their Canvas. So they don't have to remember all the different passwords. So, so at home, they need those passwords in the district supply. Yes, them. we did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's um, very unique passwords. Um, so like they're, it's by their last name, their initials, last name, first name, and then six numbers, but they have that. Um, and it really hasn't changed, um, and they cannot change their passwords. And you can so get that through the principal's office? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so again, we do start using Canvas in kindergarten, so by the time they get to, you know, fourth and fifth grade, it's not um, a big ordeal for them to get into it, and again, by the middle school, high school, it's just a real natural um, situation for them to use Canvas. So where do students access Canvas? Um, for the students, when you go to the district website, um, in the top right corner, there's a link for Canvas. And um, once you click on that page, you get brought to another page that has a button for student and staff logins. Um, right now, the parent login is um, kind of paused for the time being, and we'll explain. Um, so as a parent, if you have already established a Canvas account with, um, with for your student as a parent to observe and see, um, you can see their announcements. Um, grades that have been posted, assignments that have been posted, um, you still have access how you've accessed it before. Um, currently, Canvas is going through um, updating their parent user interface. They're making some changes. So what that means right now is they have stopped the ability to create a new account right now for parents. Um, changes are gonna be happening over the summer. So as soon as we get information from Canvas on how to create um, a parent account with their new interface for parents, whatever that may look like, we'll have the information out um, to you. Yeah. Does a parent account um, allow access into multiple children's? Yes. All under one? You can link multiple children um, to your same parent account. You're in as what's called an observer, so you can kind of view certain things. You can't really dig into. If there's a quiz, you can see the title of it, but you can't go in and see what the questions and answers are. Because right now, I just log in there. Mm -hmm. Right, and in the meantime, you can always ask them to log in so you can see what they have. <laughs> Is it better to go in through their passwords or parental? Depends. Right there. I would say currently right now I would log in as them, have them log it in for you because then you will see everything. And that was one of the things on the parent um, 
portal has been a little frustrating in that um, they've made some changes and you weren't able to see exactly the same thing as the students, so it was better to look at it through the students' eyes. Um, in the elementary, like I said, we use pages a lot. Those were not um, viewable um, through the parent app. So it's, um, they are, like Leah just mentioned, they are redoing that. So hopefully by fall, we'll have, they'll have all new look and it'll be much easier for everyone. But they, they've given us all a letter, I mean, at the beginning, and here's your student's account, and here's their password, and you know, if you don't have that, you can get that from your school, I would imagine. Absolutely. Through some office if you don't have it. Right, and right now they have shut down all the parent um, when I say they, Canvas has, because they are in the process of redoing it with the very end of school. They just thought it was better not to add more people, um, and they just stopped it for right now. So, but if you have an account, if you had done it prior, that account still works. It's just for new people in the last four days of school here, you just can't sign up for one. So. Hold on to. Okay, so I'm here to talk a little bit about Naviance. This is, um, as was mentioned earlier, more something for eighth graders through twelfth graders, um, but it's really used for families to dig deeper into the college search process and career search process. And it begins um, in eighth grade where students do take some assessments. They take a career interest profiler, they do some digging about themselves and what their interests are to then start linking that to what courses do you want to take in high school, what, um, what career pathway do you want to go, um, and that kind of thing. So this is just a, a snapshot of our school website, the Central High School website, um, and there's a button up at the top right hand corner for Naviance, and then once you click on that, it brings you to this screen, and you have to click to enter. Um, so, like I said, if you don't have a student in eighth grade through high school, um, you won't have access to this, but it's a great tool to start to be aware of so that you can hit the ground running as your student enters. Um, so, this is what the view is of a student, and they actually, as you're talking about Canvas updating, they just updated Navion, so this is a brand new screen for everybody. Um, so if the student hasn't been in in a while, things look a lot different and they may have to see their counselor or something just to be familiar with the new setup. Um, so I'm gonna- Do they access this daily just out of curiosity? I, I would love for that to be the case. <laughs> no, um, not at this point in time. It is a goal of ours in our student services department at the high school to get them to frequent it more often because it is capable of doing a lot more than what we currently use it for. Um, right now, the main tool that's used is requesting transcripts, requesting letters of recommendation, um, applying for colleges. So a lot of it doesn't get used until junior end of junior year, beginning of senior year. Um, but what I was gonna show you here, and I, I'll have to turn my back a little bit, is um, there's a tab here where it's like colleges I'm thinking about and then colleges I'm applying to as well as careers I'm thinking about. So in each of those colleges I'm thinking about or careers I'm thinking about, you can dig down and say, I want a college that is a four-year college. I want to get a bachelor's degree. I want a degree in education secondary with an emphasis in history. You can say, I want a small school, I want a large school, I want to be in the Midwest, I want, um, you know, in all of your wants, there's check boxes that you can click off of, and I'll show you that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so as you dig down into what you want in your college choice, then you can start adding those colleges to your colleges I'm thinking about. So as a freshman going in, you can start thinking about what is it that I'm interested in? Now you don't have to change those colleges to the ones I'm applying to until you get older, but at least you start to think about what are the, where do I think I might wanna go? Because then once you know that, through Naviance you can dig down and say, okay, what are the requirements to get into that school? Or the, you know, my plan B school, or 
Um, so you can learn a lot more about each of the colleges that you're interested in so that you can start to plan your four years of college or of high school to make sure that you're getting the proper um, coursework in. Now the counselors help with that as well, but sometimes students aren't aware of really where they want to go until the final stretch. And then they're looking back on their four years saying, ooh, I wish I would have taken more elective English courses or more psychology courses. Um, so this will help you there a little bit. Um, Is there classes on this for the, for the kids to learn? There are, so we don't have any specific courses that students would take here, but our counselors, currently the way study hall is, is everyone has it at the same time. So our counselors have pulled the groups of kids in during study hall and met with large groups, like an auditorium full, to go over some of the basics of, especially during that junior, senior year time frame. Um, with our new schedule coming on next year, study halls are throughout the day. So they can start targeting smaller groups of kids and getting a little bit more in depth with them. So that's a, a goal moving forward. And then, yes, um, our commons area is being renovated this summer. So they're upgrading our commons area. And as part of that, there will be a college and career center where students could stop in and meet with counselors during that time as well. Um, to dig deeper and it'll be housed with computers in there and some information that they would need as well. Um, so I'm going to just log in here as a test student so you guys can see a little bit. And I apologize that I'm going to have my back to you. but So in Naviance, hopefully it'll log in for us. <laughs> in Naviance, every semester I have to upload a cumulative GPA for each of the students. And then after SAT testing, I upload an SAT test score for each of the students as well. And so part of um, when you're searching for colleges, part of that process is they will take your information that's in there, your grades, your GPA, your test score, um, and will calculate where you fit into the requirements of that college. It says I'm connected, but we'll try it again. There we go. It, it's been around for a while. One of our goals here Almost. at the high school is they get a pretty good tutorial on Naviance in eighth grade. But you know, high school kids are high school kids. So the, the issue becomes they don't really see a need until they get into their junior year. But the problem with that is it's been two years since they've looked at it. So one of the things uh, Kim and her team are going to do is to utilize that college and career center and try to do more tutorial, mm -hmm. ongoing tutorial work with them uh, that freshman and sophomore year so that when you know the, the rubber meets the road junior year, uh, you know, they're not waiting for an appointment with their counselor to figure out how to do it, that they're they stay pretty familiar with it. The kids pick up pretty quick. So. It's only like they can start building their profile or their wish list mm -hmm. as, they're, as they get going and yeah. do more with it. Right. It, as far as we're concerned, and when we had a college day on SAT day, uh, we had all our freshmen in the auditorium before they went on a field trip to Northern. One of the things they heard from an admissions counselor is, and they were shocked, the admissions counselor told that whole group of freshmen, I will almost never look at your, sen at your senior year grades. Wow. Uh, he, it basically so it's freshmen through junior, junior year. Junior year, yeah. You because know, so like all of a sudden, Wow, it matters. So while you know, you know, a kid is a freshman, 
may not know exactly, I may not know exactly where they want to attend or whatever. That's a great wish year. Like, oh, you know, I was going to play football at the University of Notre Dame. That would have been great to have that to click on. I go, whoa, this is what I need to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So even if it's just a matter of imagining, mm -hmm. this would be a great school for them to, to begin playing around with. So it took a while for this page to load, so hopefully as I click through it, we'll load a little bit faster. But basically on this top right side here, it has colleges, careers, about me. The colleges tab is where we'll, we would spend a lot of the time, where they can search for colleges, they can apply to colleges, and then you had mentioned scholarships. There's also a scholarship match tool here as well, where they can drill down, just like I talked about with the colleges, and they can say, Here's my GPA, here's my test scores, I'm an African-American male, I am from Illinois, I live in the county of whatever, and then they'll compile, because there's scholarships for everything out there, um, and they'll take all that information and say, okay, now here's scholarships that would be good for you to apply for. So not only do we upload the local scholarships to Naviance, but they also have the database of all of the national scholarships that are available there. So. Um, so if you go under, I went under the Colleges tab and then the Search tool, and this Super Match is the one that I had talked about, and it will take you to an outside website. But here is where I talked about drilling down into what you're looking for. So if you, over to the left, it talks about the different things that you could drill down by. So tu tuition and fees. You can say, I, it says, I can pay up to this much per year in tuition. So you can say, I don't want to spend any more, and I don't know why it keeps moving, any more than 24000 a year. Mm -hmm. And you can say then, is that kind of important, very important, or um, must have? And then as you click those, it starts to reduce the number of colleges that you're looking for. It also... Um, talks about location the major, your test scores, and so you can put in everything that you're looking for and what you're looking for in a college. Um, and really think about, because everybody thinks NIU, ECC, Eastern, Western, you know, all of the ones that are in the state, and, um, but they don't think about some of those smaller schools or the ones that aren't as common or the out-of-state schools. And so this really opens their eyes to all of that. Um, and helps them with that. So this first one that's up here, I can then say, this is, this is a college that I'm thinking about, and click right here, it says add to the colleges I'm thinking about. And then if I go back to my Naviance page, right here it says colleges I'm thinking about. If it loads. Eighth, eighth grade. grade. So as an eighth, eighth grade year begins, not like this summer. Correct. So as an eighth grader, they'll get their login and password in their no, health. No, we're just finishing up. You know, we're going to get cut. So okay. That's okay. In their health class, they will get that access, and that's where they do take those first assessments in terms of their um, career interest profile and some of the ones that are that will narrow down the search field. Is it possible to gain access? It is not. Um, as a district, we pay per student, and so we, we limit it to the time, the years where it's most pertinent. Um, but that's not to say if there was a student that was in elementary school or middle school and they wanted access, that super match tool is an outside website um, you could go to, or you could reach out to one of us at the high school, whether it be a counselor or myself, and we can sit down and do kind of that narrowing down just to just to talk about what's out there. It's just coming in that it's a new freshman who hasn't been in the school system yet. How will they get access then? And can they go back and use some of those? Yes. So two things. One, the assessments they take in eighth grade, our counselors always say it's good to take again because what you wanted to do in eighth grade or what your interests were in eighth grade may change by the time you're a junior or senior. So However, in order to take that again, um, the counselor has to reset it. So you just reach out to the counselor. Um, if you're new family, part of our new family checklist is that the counselors let me know. 
and then I add that student to Naviance, and then the counselor would be able to communicate to that student what their username and password is. Um, and with that, every student gets a password, and similar to Canvas, every parent could also have a password. Um, you don't have access to as much as a parent, um, but you can still see what they've put in their colleges I'm thinking about, and you can see where they're applying to um, and go from there. But I, I know we're out of time, but from here you can really dig into what are the requirements of that college, what's the GPA, what are their admissions, what's the cost, and all of that. So there's so much that Naviance can do, and it's just getting that message out to our, our families. I think that since we didn't get to Skyward, I don't know yeah. if you were interested in that, we will start here, kind of where we left off, we're just finishing up, and didn't finish up the last session. We'll start here with Skyward, so if those of you who are here want to stick around, then we'll get to Skyward and then go back to the beginning and see right. kind of where we pick up. All right, so come on in, if you're just walking oh, in. Oh, thank you. Skyward. Yes, get to talk Skyward now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you get a sign? <laughs> yeah, there's no reason not to go ahead and touch on it if you um, want some information on Skyward. Um, so for those of you just coming in, um, my name is Mandy Bavaro. I am with the district office, and so I do, I wear a lot of different hats. Um, but one of the things that I do a lot, work a lot with, is the Skyward, the student side of Skyward, um, where you do all of your student management. This is where you go for your students' grades, you do attendance, you do all these things. So if you have not gotten logged into Skyward yet as a parent, you should. And so if you do not know your login information, you can reach out to your school office, the district office, if it's over the summer, we're happy to help you as well. But it really is important that our parents are getting into Skyward and they're checking out what's going on with their kids. Um, just a wealth of information there. Here are just a few things listed. When you get logged in to Skyward, you can view grades, attendance, report cards, your bus information for your students, their test scores on like the standardized tests, um, SAT, MAP, those kinds of things. Um, you see announcements that might be pushed out through Skyward. You can schedule your parent-teacher conferences. You do online registration, and there's a lot more too. So it really is important that our families are getting into Skyward. I'm um, going to kind of just go down the left-hand side. When you log in, on the left-hand side, you have a menu of options. Um, some of these things we don't use as much as others, um, so some of them I'm not going to really touch on today. I'm trying to hit those that are most widely used and where we get most of our questions. Um, so the first one at the top is online registration. Um, as a little plug, since I do help with registration, please get your registration done if you've not yet done so. <laughs> Every student must have online registration completed before the first day of school, so it's very, very important that you get it done. If you've already gone through it before, it only usually takes you less than 10 minutes. It's not a very lengthy process, but you do need to go in and confirm information each year. So if you've not done that yet, please go home and do it tonight. Take you 10 minutes, you get it done off your plate. Um, but it really is very important. When you're going through the process for online registration, on the right hand side there you see student information, family address, etc. Each of those will need a green check mark. So even if there's no changes, you have to go into each step, say complete the step and go on to the next step. Um, there is a guide that we have online. If you go to um, parents and then to registration information, there is a guide that walks you step by step every single step of the process. So if you get stuck somewhere, that can help you or of course, of course call your school office or the district office and we're happy to help as well. Any questions on online registration before we move on? Another tool is the calendar. So on the calendar, you can see a wealth of information. At the lower levels, elementary, they're not going to use this as much. So don't be alarmed if you go into Skyward and you don't see a lot. If you have young children, you'll see it more with older students. So on the calendar, you can see assignments that are up there, assignments and tests that have been completed. You can see absences, a lot of different information on there. And if you just click on one of the items on the calendar, you'll see this next box pop open there that gives you more details about about that. So if it's an assignment, then you can click on it and see what the grade was on the assignment, when it was due, that kind of stuff. Do you have a question? Yes. Yeah. I don't think that this comes through Canvas. Um, so some things might be put in Canvas and not be put in here till later. So I would not say this is going to be a complete picture of everything going on with your yeah, children. 
Yeah, yeah especially at the higher levels. Um, but there is a lot of information on yeah, here. On this, you want to just take a quick look. Yeah. Actually, with Canvas, um, they can shut it off that it doesn't go into Skyward um, or vice versa. So, like, you get your instructions might mm -hmm. do that for their own reason. Right. So but Skyward is where the um, final grades come out of. So that's your masterpiece. Right, but Skyward calendar might not be updated until the homework, the homework is graded. And graded, right. So yeah. some so teachers do go into the grade book and mark assignments that are in the future and not grade them until the other two are due. So that's where this calendar would be helpful is if that teacher is doing it ahead of time, then you can see their due like date. What's coming mm -hmm. up. But most of the time, teachers are putting things in Skyward once it's graded. Um, so then you're only seeing was mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah. So maybe define, yep. you know, what grades it really starts becoming more robust. Uh, Gail, you could probably answer that better than I can. I think at least the middle school level, yeah, we middle see school. a lot more of that. You probably will see some of it at elementary, yeah. but maybe not till more like three, four, five. You know, it, yeah. you're not going to really see stuff on your calendar as far as grades go for your primary students. But absences will be on there. So you can see, see if I have my little pointer here. Um, on the 14th here, this student was absent. So I could click on that absent line there and it would open up a box similar to this one that will say the reason for the absence that kind of thing so if your student was sick you look at the calendar of a, were they really sick maybe you left before they came home you didn't know whatever you can kind of see what's going on and what we have on record for their absences yes so yeah especially for me who was uh, a new family coming into the district what's the difference between skyward and canvas and all this stuff i mean dumb it down take it back to the middle Sure, and, and I'll, I don't know if you came in and heard me. We started this session at the last session and didn't finish with Skyward, so we're kind of jumping in the middle. So if we can finish up with the Skyward, we can hopefully circle back and you can get a better picture of what Canvas is. If we aren't able to get to everything and answer all your questions tonight, this presentation will be going onto our district website within the next week. So you can always come back and reference it and there is a whole section on Canvas. Generally speaking, Canvas is a learning management system and so they use that to um, give quizzes, assign homework, work, those kinds of things, depending on the class and the nature of the assignment. Skyward is about student management, not just course management. So Skyward has attendance, it has grades, it has discipline. It, it's what we as a school use to know everything about our students. Does that kind of help? It's kind of like home base. Yep. That, that's where you register the kids. Everything. Every, yeah. Skyward's like, it's the master. And Canvas will, will feed into it. But again, it depends, and we'll go through the Canvas um, presentation. So you have two then. separate logins. As a parent, do you have two separate logins, two separate passwords? Or what For Skyward and Canvas, yes. Yep. Any other questions on the calendar? OK. Um, the next piece down is a grade book. Uh, so here you can see what your child's grade is in every class at any given moment. It does break it down by quarter, by semester as well. And then if you click on the grade, for example, I looked at the pre-algebra grade here. The student has an A at quarter four. I clicked on that A, and then it broke it down to where I could see all the different assignments that are going into that grade. And you can even click farther, click on the assignment itself, and get even more details. So you really can get a wealth of information in here. Again, you're going to have a lot more assignments in here at middle school and up than you will for the younger kids, but it really is a good place to go. And really, this is our primary way of communicating grades to you, either by the gradebook or looking at report cards, which are also on here and we'll get to in a minute. Is it best for the parents to have one Skyward? Each parent can have their own login. You will see the same information. Okay. But you can, each parent is assigned a login. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and you might not be able to see, again, we're going to put this online so you can get a closer up picture in the future if you'd like to, but it does break down how much of it is test. You might have some high school courses where most of the grade is tests and projects and very little is homework. So that will help you understand why if they got A's in all their homework, they're still getting a C in the class. So that can be very helpful. All right, bus information. Now this is something that was new this year. I know it created some confusion, so I wanted to make sure to touch on it. The menu choice on the left says student info. It doesn't say bus, so you kind of have to remember that. But if you click on student info, 
this, I obviously had to take out all the student specific information. Normally you'll see your child's photo on this page if we had them this past year and we have their school picture. Um, but then next to their name, and I have it marked in red there, is view bus schedule. If you click on that, then the second box pops up. And if you click view pickup bus stops or view drop off bus stops, then you get the exact location of your student's bus stop. So what the intersection is um, and then what time it arrives or drops off. So in the past, you had to go into the Versa Trans system, which was our transportation system. We now are filtering that information directly into Skyward, so you don't have to go to the transportation system, and you just get it all here instead. Okay. Fees, everybody's favorite thing. Um, <laughs> one thing to note with online registration, if you are not able to make a fee payment at that time, that's fine. You go in like you're going to, complete the step, and continue on. But of course, we do ask that you do go back in and pay your fees. You do not need to go back into online registration to do that, though, because if you do that, it marks it open again and creates confusion. The easier way to do it is go into fee management. And then you'll see right now, this time of year, there's the current year that we're in and then next year. So in this particular case, the student has all their fees paid for the current year, but they've not yet done registration or paid their fees for the second year. So when you see two separate sets of boxes, that's why. You can always see the school year here is always what the spring term is when graduation is. So if you have fees that you need to pay, you just go over to make a payment, click on that. It will take you to RevTrack. I didn't go into RevTrack here. Um, it really walks you through. It is our online payment system that we use. I think you're probably familiar with it, but that will take you there. So you can always pay your fees in there. Report cards. It doesn't say report cards on the left hand side, it says portfolio, but that is where all of our report cards are stored. So as students get report cards, you're not going to get them by paper anymore. They are all here in Skywards. So you want to make sure you log in to do that. You'll see them all in there. They don't go away. They stay in there. So you can see this student has several years worth of report cards in there. When you get to the report card that you want to check out, then you just click on the report card and this box is going to pop up. It's going to ask you to sign that you've seen it. This way the teachers can see, yes, the parents have seen the report cards. So if there's a question, they know that you at least have seen what the grades are. If they want to call you and you haven't looked at it, then they might have to have a little bit of a different conversation to let you know what's going on. Um, so we do ask that you do check those out. We do post the dates of the report cards being posted on the website as well, so you can always, you always know when those are happening. Um, but please do go into portfolio and check out your child's report card. The other good thing is too, you can't lose it. You just go back in there if you need to check past years. Maybe you don't remember what last semester's was. You can go in and see them at any time. All right, any questions on Skyward? I know I went through a lot of information really fast. All right, so I think we'll go back towards the start of this. Okay, so those of you who are already here, thank you. Just get reset here real quick. All right, so the, kind of going back to the beginning. So these are things we wanted to touch on in this session. Um, the 301 website, the mobile app, Canvas, and Naviance, and of course, you just heard about Skyward. So we'll see what we get through tonight. Again, this will go online. If you have other questions later, please reach out. We'll be happy to answer questions as you have them. The website I'll just touch on real quickly. Hopefully. <laughs>